aurora visible from the American South? Northern lights, they were spotted as far south as right here in central Florida. What's up with that? You surely know that aurora come from explosions on the sun that direct plasma pi towards Earth. And there's a time delay between the two. NASA has an entire office of space weather, that's what we call it, where we're keeping an eye on the sun. Like, what are you doing today? Boom, explosion, but that went off in this direction. Boom, explosion, that went this way. Boom, headed straight towards us. You can calculate how fast are these particles moving and how long will it take before it slams into Earth? These are charged particles, politely known as the solar wind. This is a swarm of charged particles headed towards us. We have a liquid iron core. It's called a dynamo phenomenon. When you have a, a liquid core, the, the churning of that liquid electrically conducting material called iron that generates a magnetic field. The negative and positive Charges coming from the sun upon seeing Earth's magnetic field split, one to each pole of the Earth. These particles slam into the molecules of Earth's atmosphere, primarily the nitrogen and oxygen molecules, the two dominant species of gas in our atmosphere. They slam into them, kick them to higher energy levels where they don't stay. They don't stay. So the kinetic energy kicks them to higher energy levels. And then when they de-excite, themselves, they'll do that naturally, they emit light, curtains of light, beautiful colors of light. Each species of molecule in our atmosphere reveals a different color, different shade of light. And so they're beautiful. We call it the aurora, aurora borealis, the northern lights, aurora australis, the southern lights. So where's the best place to see an aurora? Not at the North Pole itself, but there's a ring, huge ring, like a hat that sits on the poles. And at the edge of that ring is where Aurora are best viewed. All right, this historically has been the purview of people who live far North, in Alaska, in Northern Canada, where nobody lives, in Norway, okay, the, the island of Great Britain any place high north. So we didn't spend much time talking about it here in what Alaskans call the lower 48. So what's up with these increased sightings of Aurora deep into the lower 48 states? There are multiple reasons for this. First, right now, 2024, 2025, 2026, we are at solar maximum. The sun goes through cycles. If you didn't otherwise know, these cycles last on average 11 years. It goes from a period of quiescence to a period of high activity. Our metric for this is blunt and simple. It's how many sunspots are on the sun. Is it low? Then we're in solar minimum. Is it high? Is it peaking? We're at solar maximum. There it is. During solar maximum, the sun's energy level increases in the high energy bands of light, ultraviolet especially. Most of that is trapped in the upper atmosphere, thankfully. You know, thank your neighboring ozone molecule, which is three oxygen atoms combined. It absorbs ultraviolet, takes it out of the equation. So, A, we're at solar max. So you would expect more explosions on the sun. These explosions have the coolest name ever. Coronal mass ejections. <laughs> and they bust a move on the surface of the sun. And if you show the size of the earth compared with one of these explosions, you say, oh my, <laughs> the sun is badass. And it reminds us of that fact every 11 years. By the way, these coronal mass ejections are not harmless. This flux of particles, if it's high enough, can short circuit our space assets. All of them have electronic circuitry. I don't think anyone sent up a basketball just for fun, all right? All of these satellites matter to what we call modern civilization. A high enough intensity coronal mass ejection can take out legions of satellites. 
And so there's a way to make your satellites electronically hardened is the term to make them more resistant to this flux of charged particles than they otherwise would be so that you don't lose functionality. And especially with regard to the military, you don't want our security compromised for it. All right, we're in solar max. However, our solar max is not the highest of recent cycles. One cycle ago, it was lower than this, yes. But the cycle before that, we're now going back 22 years, it was much higher. And the cycle before that was higher still. That's going back 33 years. So how come we didn't hear anybody talk about uh, Aurora in the, in the lower 48 then? So let's add up our reasons for these sightings. So one, we're at solar max. Two, cities are darker than they've ever been before. Not only that, there's less air pollution. Three solar cycles is 33 years ago. That's a long time ago in our concern for the environment and air quality and the like. In recent decades, primarily through the efforts, educational efforts of the International Dark Sky Association, cities have been redesigning their streetlights so that they point down instead of also pointing up. This sounds so obvious, but people used to just have street lamps sitting out there. And if you flew over the city in an airplane, you could see the street lights. If you could see a street light from an airplane, it meant somebody was paying for the electricity to generate light that went straight up to go through your airplane window. That's what's going on there. So we have lower air pollution. The night skies are darker in the urban areas. And one other fact, we are predicting the arrival of Aurora with higher precision than ever before. So you know when to look. And I guarantee in the past, people might've seen a glowing sky and thought nothing of it because this, you got lights over there. So it would have been easy to discount and blame it on human rather than cosmic origin. So three solar maxes ago, we did not have this ability to predict with precision, look today, look tonight in that location where you're gonna expect it. And then everybody stops everything, pulls out the cameras and does it. Previous times when that might've happened from strong storms, you didn't know that the storm was hitting. You didn't, you just didn't know, especially if you live near cities where there's always light everywhere. And aurora that is especially dim does not excite the cones of your retina. The cones are where you have the ability to distinguish color. Colors are formed in the cones of your retina, but you also have the rods of your retina, which are sensitive to just, is it brighter, is it dark? Grayscale, essentially. So what happens is for very dim aurora, you lose the color in your sensory perception and it just becomes this glow of light. And unless you knew that there was no city over under that glow, you would not be stopping in your tracks to try to photograph it. Last year, I have a photo of Aurora from Long Island. I'm on Long Island I'm photographing the Aurora. I'd never seen the Aurora that far south in my life. And one of my producers, Alex Picades, is posing with his girlfriend under the Aurora in Queens, underneath the Triborough Bridge. Oh my gosh, there it is. So add up all those reasons. We got the sun not misbehaving, the sun doing what it's been doing its whole life. And now we can celebrate. We can celebrate with the sun every time it hits solar max. We, we've lucked out, our solar maximums have not been mondo maximums. The next year or so, we're gonna be on the downswing where you won't hear about Aurora at all, except for the very rare ones that head our way that happen to be a little brighter than you expect and they'll be visible from Norway. You know what prompted me to give this what's up with that? My skeptical nephew, he texted me, said, Neil, why, why there's so much Aurora lately? But he said it with a like, is something going on with the sun? And is something you can tell me so that I'll know before everybody else and that I can like move to the hills? Or <laughs> it had that tone in it. And I said, okay, I gotta turn this into a what's up with that to put people at rest and at ease with what's going on.
So there it is. That's another what's up with that. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up, especially for Aurora.